Wasser-Song. Mike's Daily Podcast. Ep -ep Episode 976. I remember 1976. That was eons ago, but I remember that was the year that Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter ran against each other. Oh, wait a minute, that was wrong. It's Jimmy Carter versus Gerald Ford. That's right, that was 1976. 1980 was Reagan and Jimmy Carter. It, and then everybody was like, Bicentennial, Bicentennial! And women looked really hot in their red, white, and blue and dressed as Uncle Sam. Mike's Daily Podcast. Today it's the return of the Much Love feature. This is interesting, where we'll look at some interesting news stories. I'm a ham. Mike's Daily Podcast. Actually, I'm Mike Matthews, broadcasting from Cafe Anyway. And Adele is breaking records, and I am so very happy. Some may say her new song is kind of, sort of sappy, but... I believe it conveys a broken relationship that can't be fixed, yet there seems to be a flame betwixt. If you haven't heard Hello yet, then you think I'm speaking Lionel Richie's Mike's Daily Podcast set that got so badly defamed in the 40-year-old virgin. I'm kind of glad we've finally Mike's moved out Daily of the Swifty era Podcast. and into Adele's swell yeah. Anything But Hell era. Nice to hear her soulful voice. Tay Tay has about as much soul as a Birkenstock. Yet even Ryan Adams' version of Bad Blood, which I've been hearing on um, KFOG, has bucket loads of soul compared to the original. But hey, the lyrics are cool. She writes good lyrics. Or, you know, with the help of some other people. But she writes some good lyrics. So way, way, way to go. We're in the Adele world. And way to go, way to go, way. Uh, there. Oh, I had a story about. Where did it go? Oh, I don't have it anymore. I guess uh, New Hampshire is endorsing Chris Christie. We were talking about Chris Christie last show, and Valentino wants him to win, as does Bison Bentley. And yeah, well, I have to tell you, uh, I just got a story text from Haley, who should be on the next show, about how the Titanic sank because it was overrun by time travelers. So we'll find out more about that when Haley is on next show, probably. We'll see. Keep your fingers crossed. Ryan Adams hasn't really had anything big. He, have, he's done So he's covered the entire 1989 Taylor Swift album. And he's done this great version of Bad Blood, which when you listen to it, it, it is, it's kind of got this rootsy uh, Americanish slash U2 sort of sound. It sounds great. And he's done every single song Taylor Swift. Did. He's fascinated by 1989. So it'll be interesting if he gets fascinated by Adele's 25 album. Interestingly enough, the album Adele's 25, the fastest selling album of all time in England. Fastest selling. It's broken records here in America. So you've got these two huge... And a year ago, it was 1989. And this year, it's 25. What's with the numbers? And and uh, singer-songwriter females. I love it. I love this world that we li in which we live. Of uh, uh, songwriters. I remember a world where everything was boy band. And pre-produced, co corporate produced, uh, cookie cutter produced artists. And that sucked. So this is much better, don't you agree? Nespa? Um, oh, look who just walked in. Hi, Mike Matthews. It's Jolene Stewart, the jump supervisor. It, for me, it's all about Christina Milan. Who? Christina Milan. Like, she had a couple of albums. And now she's got that television show on E! She's going to be like the next Kim Kardashian. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Christina Milan. I met her... She came to this hip-hop station that was in the same building as the station I was working for in Ventura. And she's so tiny. But yeah, very pretty. And she's had some success. So Yeah, it's all about her. I'm like going to be your big fan now. Okay, I'm going to leave. Oh. All right, so she left. And as she left, look who walked in. Oh, Mike, it's Floyd the Foreman! And it's John Deere, the engineer. I find that fascinating, the story about time travelers. Arriving at the Titanic. Yeah, it's fascinating. I wonder what Haley will say about it. I mean, it's as if time travelers said, hey, let's go back to a historical point in history 
and then caused the Titanic to sink. Sink. But did it really, in fact, sink first and not uh, after? Whole Foods. Mike, you just changed topics. I did, Floyd. Whole Foods. I went to the new Whole Foods in Dublin, Ireland yesterday. No, uh, in Dublin, uh, in the in the in the Diablo Valley, and I was with my friend Robert and his fiance Christy, and we were walking around. We had just eaten at Paxty's. We had the vegan pizza there at Paxty's. They have these enormous deep dish pizzas at Paxty's. Lots of plosives in that sentence. And the vegan uh, um, pizza it, it does not have real cheese in it. The cheese has this strange. The, it's got this buttery taste to it, but they must use soy or something in it. It just didn't quite... It was a little bit funky for my carnivorous mouth and for all the people involved. Uh, Robert suggested getting the vegan pizza. Robert, who's been on the segment Welsh on the World, which we haven't done in over a year here on the show. But uh, he uh, wa- ordered it. And it's his fault. So I washed it down with some heretic brew. And Amber Ale, it was delish. So I enjoyed the pizza. I got the last piece. I picked up the bill. What the heck? I mean, they're my friends. They're engaged. They're happy. They're in love. Well, I, I endorse love. And if Taylor Swift wants to sing about love, that's fine. No matter who she may fall in love with. I hope she falls in love with a good guy next time. As I hope Christina Milan does as well. Okay, other than that, uh, Whole Foods, you walk in, amazing, right? Well-lit store, beautiful store, everything nicely stacked everywhere. Uh, I saw a lady who was nicely stacked. Oh, my gosh, there's some beautiful women in Dublin. Uh, just, I don't know why that is. And on C-SPAN, when you watch C-SPAN and the, and the student body and the student audience, they all look good, those women. In the, I don't know what's going on with me where I'm finding beautiful women these days, but C-SPAN... And Whole Foods. So you walk into Whole Foods. Beautiful women everywhere. And the prices of the food is insane. You cannot buy that food. Isn't it too expensive? No, 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 no. Whole Foods, you've got to change things. Just bring the prices down, my friend. The guy that runs that place that hates Obama for some reason and and Obamacare. Bring it down. Bring it down a notch. The prices. Mike, I would have to agree. It's way too expensive. I can't, aff- I can't afford it on my engineer salary. I can't afford it on my floor man salary. Mike, we're in love. You're in love? I endorse that. So that is what's happening with Whole Foods. I'm going to wrap it up here because we got to get to the segment. This is interesting. Uh, we'll go to websites. Mine in particular, uh, Mike's Daily Podcast.com, where you can find links to where you can listen to the show in all sorts of areas YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Podomatic. That's the tip of the iceberg, Spreaker. And then you sh- share this show with your friends because I'm on all the social media places, except for Snapchat. Not on there. No. Not going to do it. Hey, I made a reference to the 90s. Wow. Our local radio station, Live 105, played all 90s music this past weekend. We're talking semi sonic. Uh, uh, ball and Chain was a social distortion. Um, Blink 182, Green Day. Oh, it was wonderful. But uh, uh, tattoos aside, uh, if you'd like to buy anything on Amazon, please go to the Amazon link at mikesdailypodcast.com. When you buy something on there, it doesn't change the way you shop and it helps us out. And there's also the PayPal. If you want to donate any money, go to the PayPal. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. You'll get a special gre- greeting from all the Cafe uh, Anyway characters. And you'll become an inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster. And all will be well. And all shall be well. And all manner of things shall be well. And now, this is it. Oh, and the blog, the Daily Podcast picture, and all my past interviews are at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. Here we go with the much-loved segment called... This is Interesting. Wow, this is interesting. We'll be revealed on the other side. Yeah, Squirrel Nut Zippers. I love that band, and, and I've played that song before. But you know what? This is interesting. It's about squirrels. And it came from 
um, this newspaper that the East Bay Regional Park District puts out. That they, they put it out for free. Actually, I pay for it with the amount of money that I had to pay for that dog uh, ticket that I got for having my dog off leash, even though it was an area that was not clearly marked that you had to have your dog on leash. So Basil and I help pay for this newspaper. You're welcome, East Bay Regional Park District. Weather in the East Bay is usually so mild that most animals are active year-round, except for right now where it is freaking cold in the morning. We're down to freezing some days. Whether it's June or January, hikers will still glimpse deer grazing in a meadow or a coyote trotting across a hillside. Except that is for snakes and the occasional squirrel. Most snakes in the East Bay slither into burrows or under rocks in the colder months. They're not quite hibernating. They're just slowing down to conserve energy until the weather warms up. Most snakes will sleep solo, but rattlesnakes will gather in groups of up to several hundred to stay warm during the winter. Yikes. You don't want to stumble upon that lair. Thank you. I am... William Shatner. In one of the otter twists of nature, and I mean otter as in those little cute things that swim in the water on their back and they eat shellfish abalone on their back. They're so cute. No, otter as in a stranger's twists of nature, those slumbering rattlesnakes will occasionally share their dens with squirrels. Rattlesnakes and squirrels have a complicated relationship. Rattlesnakes love to eat squirrels, but adult squirrels are immune to snake venom. In fact, they are adept at harassing the deadly reptiles. Squirrels will kick dirt on a rattlesnake, chatter at it. I love it when squirrels chatter. And twitch their tails to distract or frighten the snake away. Sort of like Ricky Tiki Tavi. But that was a mongoose. But rattlesnakes never stop trying to catch a squirrel and have fairly good luck snagging, sadly, the squirrel babies, which are not immune from venom. And in the winter, it's not unusual for a squirrel to curl up with a rattlesnake for months on end, waiting out the cold until spring. Squirrels. All we really are is squirrels. We're being hunted, we are squirrels. Uh, I remember that. That was like a novelty song. The Squirrels song. uh, Based on the Beastie Boys girls. And another interesting thing about squirrels. This happened recently. Weekend cooking competitions are a pretty common sight south of the Mason-Dixon line. But according to CBSNews.com, there was something very uncommon about the one held on a recent Saturday in Arkansas. Or as Haley likes to say, Arkansas, Bentonville, the 2015 World Champion Squirrel Cook-Off. Whether you find them adorable or consider them rats with cuter tails, you've probably never considered eating them. Quote, you don't have to promote that it's organic, but it's grass-fed, anything of that nature. It just is, says Joe Wilson, the guy behind the cook-off. I mean, this is tree to table, he says. Uh, And it goes back several generations. He says it's extremely important that we hold on to the culture and the heritage of our community. I started this thing about five years ago to promote the sustainable use of wild game as a dinner at a table fair. In the cook-off, 36 colorfully named teams had two hours to produce a dish and a side dish. All the squirrel being served must be caught by the chefs themselves or their friends since buying or selling uh, wild game meat is illegal. Uh, the con- contest favorites are brothers Blaine and Brandon Estes. They've won the competition twice in its five-year history. They made squirrel sliders and a squirrel bisque. Here's the thing about cork- cooking squirrel, though. Even if you're a two-time world champion, you're going to get some pushback. Uh, Brandon Estes says, my wife wouldn't cook this. And our mom is a great cook, he says, but even as kids, she would not cook squirrel. So it was one of those deals. If you shoot it, you have to eat it. Oh, yeah. And you have to cook it, too. Squirrels! As we go outside of Cafe Anyway... Located somewhere in Podcastro Valley where there are lots of cute squirrels, which I have sometimes wanted to shoot because they run over my roof 
They make a bunch of noise and would wake me up, but since I wake up before the squirrels do now, I don't care. And here's today's podcast picture. And the podcast picture is of something, which I will pick. I haven't picked it yet, so I got the the horse behind the cart this time, or the cart in front of the... I can never get that expression right! Mike Matthews, I'm outside here right now. You don't have to yell. Oh, hi, Shelly. I just want to tell you squirrels are really cute, and Taylor Swift is really cute, but it's all about Christine. I'm all on. All right, we got that earlier. Thank you, Shelly. I don't think I can say it enough. You did. You just said it enough just then. Oh, okay. Next show, it is going to be the return of the much-loved segment called Mike on Mobile, where I will get abducted and speak once again with Clem. Plus, we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.